Hello there, everyone, in the EDAP 690 class, the class that Mayer built. This is your introduction to Module 1. Um, if you've taken classes from me before, you are pretty familiar, I think, with PBWorks Wiki. So this is a Performa kind of event. We're just doing something that we'll be using to put all of our stuff in that we create for the rest of the class. Um, using PBWorks is, I think, extremely simple. Uh, some people have asked me, why don't you, aren't you just using Google Sites now, Steve, since uh, the Google, Google owns pretty much uh, the state of Kentucky's educational institutions? And I, I, I agree with that, and I'm, I'm still thinking it over, and I may switch over to Sites. But what I have found with the PBWorks Wiki is it is so incredibly easy to use uh, and I think it is so um, flexible in its use. And because I can link it to my Google Classroom, I'm still kind of a, I'm still kind of a wiki guy. Let, let's just leave it at that. Whereas Sites is a web page, a wiki, PBWorks is a wiki, which is, I think, superior, uh, frankly, to just a simple word page, uh, web page. Where did wikis come from? It was created by a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Wales. Uh, Jimmy was a person who was a dropout from Stanford. It seems strange that all the amazing tech people, when you go back historically look at it, were all dropouts from Stanford. I don't know if it has something to do with Stanford or it has something to do with the um, idea of being a genius. Uh, I know a dear friend of mine, a student from Shelby County that I basically mentored ever since he's been in the eighth grade, who came here to U of L, uh, started out over at Speed, got tired of the um, regiment um, stupidity uh, that they displayed over there, especially since in in his first year here at U of L, he got an offer to an internship with Google. And the School of um, Engineering wasn't going to allow him to do it because it didn't fit with their model. Uh, he then transferred over here to the School of Business. Um, he lasted another year there. Um, and pretty much the same thing happened. So he just basically dropped out of college and he went to work for Google. He's now with Google X, part of the world of Google that has to do with all their crazy new ideas, as I call it, the spaghetti on the wall. Jimmy Wales came from that kind of uh, background. Where did the word wiki comes from? Well, uh, apocryphally, we, we, are, we are told that when he, he was a, by the way, he was a big surfer dude. <laughs> Again, I think just must go part and parcel with the whole genius model. Uh, he was a big surfer dude, and he would fly into Hawaii to go surf, and at the uh, cab stop stand, he would ask for a cab, and the guy would stand out in the street and wave and yell, wiki, 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 uh, meaning quickly, quickly, quickly in Hawaiian. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. It is what Jimmy Wales tells us his story. What he was really trying to do with the creation of the wiki was to come up with something to make the web, which at that point was very flat. Um, you basically just went to a web page, read some words, looked at some pictures, and followed some links. And that's about it. He wanted to make it something that would be a lot more inclusive. In other words, multiple people could own a page. And at the same time, they could also edit the page something we take for granted now that was revolutionary back then. I think it's fairly easy to say that with the uh, creation and advent of the wiki, Web 2.0 started. And I think it's fair to say that Jimmy Wales started that. So there you go. There's your history lesson for technology for today. Let's get down to it. Let's make a PBWorks wiki. You click on the link, which is located right here. Uh, I already have a PBWorks account, Steve, because I've had to make wikis with you before. That's fine. You don't need to do anything then, except up here where it says log in. You're going to log in as who you are. 
and you're going to create a new wiki that is all you're going to do. Now, I've had some people ask me, do I need, can I create, uh, can I use a wiki that I've already had? Uh, no, you have to create a new wiki, and here's where it is, right down here. Just wanted to make sure you see it. Um, let me pick one that is something I use. I think it's this one. Right. So let me go up here and clean this page up a little bit. And we'll get rid of everything that's on here. And get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that. And essentially, this is what you're left with when you first come into your wiki. You know, nice blank page. Notice at the top up here looks like a word processor, simple word processor. That's because that's what it is. Because uh, what you're looking at is the HTML where the code has been created, and then you can see it. This is a, this is what I call flat HTML, meaning that it is the kind of HTML where it's very simple to go into it and edit it. Um, why would I want to be able to do that, Steve? Well, there are times when you might want to go in and change the size of something, or you might want to go in and add a border around something. Uh, all of that is very simple to do. Uh, let me show you. This is the source. And we're going to turn off Grammarly because it gets in my way. And as you can see right now, it's showing that somebody has been in here and has done, this is what this code is saying, somebody's come in here and they've put in what are called breaks. And what that means is simply this. Let me pop back up. Somebody came in here, me, and he went bang, 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 down the page with hitting the enter key or the return key. And when he does that, what it does is it creates this little tiny bit of code right here. Now, what does it do for us? This allows me to pick anywhere on my page where I want my insertion point to be. So when I do the assignment, let's go back and look at that real fast. The assignment is basically asking me to uh, create a logo, a, a, a unique look, etc. And it's giving me these three different choices. You do not have to do all three. Please don't do well unless you want to play. Enjoy yourself. But you may just pick from one of these or or it can be your school logo or just a unique graphic for who you are and representing what you teach. I, I just put these three up here because I think they're kind of fun to play with and to give you some choices. So as you can see, by doing that little trick where I come in and I just go return, 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 enter, 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 whatever it is on your keyboard. I'm, I've got two or three keyboards in front of me here. And, you know, it looks like they all say enter. Okay, so enter, enter, enter. Um, you are basically giving yourself the ability now to jump into the page anywhere and click. And the reason why you can do that is because that's the code that's in here. This is what I mean about flat HTML. I could go in here and if I wiped out all of this and then I came back to here, I wouldn't be able to do that because I would have taken away the HTML code. All right. First thing you have to realize is that when you want to work on your wiki page, you must hit the edit tab. And the other thing you need to remember is when you get done working on your wiki page, please, please, please save it down here. You can save and continue, meaning you can save your work and then go back and keep work, working on it. But when you're finished, please remember to save Otherwise, your page will be go, will go bye bye. Let's go back and look at that again. Our module says to use one of these three. Well, let's look at the Red Kid generator. I don't know what Red Kid stands for. I hope it's nothing. Uh, 
that's not uh, acceptable. But as you can see, you can create any kind of sign with any kind of background. And uh, it then gives you a place to put that in your, oh, I have not seen the beaver sign before. I might have to do the beaver sign. Let's go back and see what else, the cow. I kind of like the cow brand. No, I don't like branding cows. Uh, hot dog, interesting. Oh, look, there's a t-shirt. Okay, there's the Beatles. It's all kinds of things. Parade banner, sandwich board, a ballroom. Okay, how about if I'm going to do the beaver one? And so what I can do uh, is I can just go in here and I can write welcome to my amazing EDAP 690 wiki. Okay. Or I could go in here and say, welcome to my wiki that mayor built, or, you know, whatever. Or, or I could just say, welcome to my wiki. I don't have to use up all six of these lines. And then I'll go and say, gnaw, which I mean, I guess means, you know, save. Oh, look, it looks like he gnawed my, oh, that's kind of cute. I kind of like that. Now, how do I save it? Right click on it, save image as, and then give, give it a name down here. Don't leave it just as your sign. So I'm going to put EDAP 690. And I'm going to put it on the desktop because I am lazy. Okay, okay. Now, I'll go back in to close that out. I'll go back into my PV works. And then what I have to do over here is I have to go to images and files. And I have to upload a file. And I'm going to go to this PC, this desktop, because that's the way this machine's been set up. Oh, looky. There's my picture. And I'm going to say open. Okay, it now pulls it up into my list. Your list will probably be very small because you don't have anything in it until right now. Now I click on it and it brings it over onto my page. And I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller by grabbing that little square in the lower right hand corner. And because I did all that work ahead of putting those uh, breaks, those paragraph breaks, into my uh, wiki page right away, I can now type right underneath him, this is my EDAP 690 wiki. Love the beaver sign. Okay. When I am finished, all I have to do, remember, is save it. There we go. I now have a wonderful little beaver who is gnawed on my tree. Simple as that. Go back to our course. Let's look at the next one Steve put in here. That is Make Beliefs Comics. And in this particular one, um, you can create your own comics. It's totally free. And I can make it three panels or one panel. So I'm going to go ahead and go with one. Yes, thanks. And it'll give me that same message again. Are you sure? I'll say yes. And now I can go ahead and start creating as much as I want. Um, 
I can go down here to my characters. I can find the character that I want to put into my panel. As you can see, they take them a little while to pop in. So just, you know, bear with it. Uh, I'll do the, obviously, this simplest one. And I'll go ahead and put this guy in. Okay. Now that I have that guy in there, I'll go back. And I'll go back. And I'll find the talk balloons that I want to put in. And let's see, we'll put this talk balloon. Uh, let's see if it'll move. If I can get it all to fit together. Let's see. Get him up there and slide him over there. Yeah. Might even cover up the card a little bit. I don't know. And then I'll write in here, welcome to my EDAP 690 wiki. That's it. That's all there is to it. I might move it down a little bit just so it looks nicer. And we are done. Simple as that. Now, if I want to save it, I can. And if I want to grab it, guess what? I right click on it, save image as, I'll call it comics. And again, we'll put it on our PC desktop. And we'll save it. Jump back over here to my PB Works. Hit the Edit tab. I'm going to go ahead and drop down below the my friend the beaver here. Images and files. Upload the file. There's my comic open it comes in here and I drop it in there that is a big picture so once again I'll shrink it a little bit and as you can see now I have a nice beaver picture one and I've got a nice magician one what's that last one we could use I have to admit, I have to, I have to, full disclosure, <laughs> this one's my favorite, the peanut dies one. Now, what you can do with this is you basically go in and you're going to create using one of the characters. And somebody put this out because of, I think the movie, that's where it came from. Yeah, the peanuts movie, but it's still there. It's still there. So it's kind of neat. So now you can decide, who, who, and it plays music. You can decide if you want to do a peanut size or a Snoopy size. Let's do Snoopy. You want to do a fat Snoopy, a medium Snoopy, or a skinny Snoopy. I'm going to go with a medium one. And I'm going to decide how I want his hair to be. So on and so on. Okay. By the way, that music is going to keep playing until, you know. And again, I get to decide what color do I want his ears to be. And I'm just going to keep right on going. And his eyes. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think we should put a hat. Let's see. Now. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Collar. I hate putting collar, but yeah. Okay, next. Oh, that's kind of cool. Let's let him have a ball. Ooh, I have a frisbee. A dog food dish. I have a bone. I have no. 
I'm going to do the phrase making. Now, what it says is I can now download this. I'm going to download it as a profile picture. All that means is it'll be smaller. <laughs> That's all. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and give it the title of Snoopy. And I'll do the same trick all over again. PC. Desktop. Open and save. There we go. Isn't that great? I love that one because you get to play it and listen to the music at the same time. All right, here we are. We're back on our page again. Edit. And let's drop below our comic beliefs. Put my little images and files. Make sure you select that. Now I'm going to go and grab my Snoopy. And I'm going to open it. Bring it in. And now I can bring it over. My goodness, that's enormous. Looks like you have to have put up a little bit of free advertisement for the Peanuts movie, which is long gone. <laughs> but okay, that's all right. Oops, I lost him. No harm, no foul. You're over here in my list. Now, you don't have to use these three. Uh, as I say right in here, that if you want to go and just put any picture that you have that represents who you are, what you teach, your school, whatever, please feel free to do that. Um, and that's all there is to it. Now, you know, I just realized something. I, I keep assuming that the people who are in this course have all done any, have created or set up a uh, wikis before. So, um, I think we better go and start from scratch just real fast to give you an idea how this works it's very simple here we go get started you are going to make sure that you pick an education one edu hub um, just get a basic one that's all you need This is where you put in what you want the name of your PB Works wiki to be called. I'm going to, for giggles for right now, I'm going to say EDAP, Swan EDAP 690. Okay. And you have to put that check there, tell them it's for education. I'm going to put my name in, my email address, and I'm going to enter a password. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Oh, it says a uh, password wrong. Okay, that's fine. So let me give it the password that I use for just about everything. And then I say next. And it says my password doesn't match. Okay. I'm not going to do this much longer, folks. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to stop here. You get the idea. When you do this, um, basically what it will do then is it'll give you that look 
that we were already looking at before, uh, which is just a blank page. So the things that take away from this is very straightforward. You want to make sure that every time you create something, that you save it. If you don't do that, then all that hard work that you put into it then kind of goes away. So just make sure that everything that you put into it, that you then scroll to the bottom. When you're in edit mode, that's the other thing, remember, hit the edit tab. Scroll to the bottom and make sure you hit the save right here. All right, that is module number one. That's all there is to it. Now, let's look over here in the assignments and see what it says. As you can see, it's the same thing. When you click up here, it'll say, here is your assignment for this particular module. And what you have to do is you have to write submission. In other words, this is how you're going to put it in there. And when you do that, you get this. Now, if I go back here and if I select, let's go ahead and do view. When I go ahead and select my page, I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to come over here to where I just was. And I'm going to now paste it in. You're going to have to make sure that when you do this, that you see it as the blue underline and that makes that says that it is now a that is that is a website okay and i can submit that Okay, good enough. That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, next Wednesday, I'll be back with another um, review, preview, how to of the next module. This is the lift. This is the heavy work of this whole class. This will be mayor. I will spend some time, serious time, uh, because as you can see right here, it says I'm not requiring you to have a text for this class because you would kill me if I made you go out and buy the $90 text. Um, I'm going to have to be mayor teaching you. Uh, also, within this module is the information that you will need to be able to complete Mayer. Richard Mayer is probably the final word on multi-learning. He is by no means, I want to make something clear. This is not a course about how to make your PowerPoints better. Although Rich seems to rely upon PowerPoints to make his point. This is not that. If we were going to do that, uh, we would have done Zen and the Art of uh, PowerPoint, Guy Reynolds' book, Gar Reynolds' book, um, which is the book that basically is what Steve Jobs used to develop all the presentations that he did at every single one of the Apple uh, dis uh, displays of their new technology every year. And they still use it, by the way. Uh, it was the basis for how uh, Apple developed their own presentation um, keynote. That's how what they use. But we're not doing that. This is basically the nuts and bolts of how you learn from multimedia. And right here is the link that will take you to all the things that I think are germane to that. If you want to hear from the man himself, there he is. There's Richard Mayer. 
and he's talking about his principles. It can be a little bit dry, so I'll try not to do that to you. Um, it is probably best done right here. Um, in this um, multimedia learning review that someone did, and he does a nice job of laying out the 12 principles of Mayer. By the way, this is new. Image principle is new. Huh. That's interesting. And then he goes through and he explains it all to you, what they all mean. And he does it in a very simple, straightforward way. It's very nice. It's very well done. I really appreciate um, how, this, how this is laid out. But I also have in here the Cliff Notes version. There you go. There's the 12 principles now and what they mean. So we'll do this. I'll have this up um, next Wednesday. And every uh, video that is required, I will have up uh, the, the Wednesday of every week. And I hope, as always, that if you have any problems, any concerns, you know how to reach me. You text me at 502-457-2937. I will see you next week.